I'm Paul Beckwith, and this is uh, Shackleton, the Explorer. Well, 2020 is almost over. Got about another another couple days. Uh, well, tomorrow's Christmas, and then uh, another week till the new year, and we're into 2021. So I want to first of all wish everybody a happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. In I'm in Ottawa, which is in Ontario, and the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, has uh, basically announced a shutdown of everything. And it was supposed to be um, supposed to be tonight, but it's delayed until uh, my birthday, which is the December 26th. And uh, you know, hard, hard, hard lockdown, hard shutdown. It's been a, it's been a tough year. Um, I'll do a separate video on. I think I think I um I think I know the way to um eliminate this virus from society using uh some very simple technology and uh I'll do a separate video on this but what I want to talk about right now and in the next few videos is the top 10 weather and climate events of 2020 now you know there's hundreds and hundreds of very very disturbing extreme weather events, uh, you know, at, that are, you know, mostly have a direct um, relationship to climate change. Abrupt climate change has destabilized weather patterns around the planet. And we're just setting record after record. But I want to talk about some of that stick to mind. And uh, Yale Climate Connections has done, a, done their top 10 list. So I'm going to uh, talk about the things that they think are the uh, you know make the top ten, and uh, I'll use Earth Null School a lot. I'll show you the patterns and uh, you know wind patterns, temperatures, etc., sea surface temperature, um, how those uh, things are resulting in these extreme weather events. So I'll discuss those in detail. So uh, happy New Year, again. Okay, so this is the Yale uh, Climate Connections, and you can easily access this. Um, this article. But before I get into this, I just want to uh, say check out my blog if you haven't, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, subscribe to it. I'm not very good at the comments on the blog, but I'm going to start using them. I'm going to start checking them every few days and reply. So that's one way of getting a hold of me um, with questions. Or you can email me, or you can find my you know, Facebook or Twitter message me, etc. I do use uh, LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. Occasionally this year I'll start looking at Reddit more. Some people have asked me to go on and go on to these ask me anything things on Reddit. So I'll do all of that. Um, you know, uh, 2021, you know, climate is becoming ever more important. You know, I've been saying for a while that we're going to get disruptions to our global food supply. So, uh, you know, and I'll talk about all kinds of things like that. Um, you know, keep these videos going at least a couple times a week. Okay, so this was a uh, last blog. I want to thank David Korn, who, who does the blogs, and uh, is talking about the... Um, I've been talking a lot about the Arctic, and recently I talked about Dansgaard Osher oscillations and how... Um, you know, how the temperature over Greenland abruptly increased, and are we in another type of Dansgaard Osher event? Okay, so anyway, paulbeckwith.net. Um, please make sure you um, subscribe and you get the blogs when they come out, and please consider a year end um, donation on PayPal, you know, maybe for my birthday or year end. Um, it's been a tough year for everybody, me included, and uh, you know, we're all trying to uh, to get by. So check out my blog. This is my uh, YouTube channel. Okay, um, 21,000 subscribers. You know, it's going up steadily, but, you know, fairly slowly. So please, uh, you know, if you like my stuff, please share it around and uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, so I, and you can go to the search here and I've done, I think I've done almost a thousand videos on YouTube, 15 minutes long, covering every different aspect of 
climate change, a lot on solutions, um, a lot on um, you know where where we are now, where I think we'll be in the next few years, next few de next decades, and and um, also uh, beyond that, um, and also what we what can we do solutions wise? Can we do anything? Is it too late to do anything? You know, um, I talk about some of the technologies that we can use to try to you know do what we need to do, which is slash fossil fuel emissions pull CO2 out of the atmosphere, and cool the planet. Okay, using, blocking some of the sunlight solar radi using solar radiation management technologies. Okay, so this is uh, my Facebook here. And, uh, you know, please follow me. Uh, you can find me at, just Google Paul Beckwith Facebook, or go into Facebook and find me at Paul Beckwith, Paul.Beckwith.9 is my page. And um, so I've got a page and also a group. And of course, my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. So here's a post that I pinned. I usually pin the previous um, um, videos post. So I was talking about Arctic warming today versus abrupt warming in the past Dansgaard Osher oscillations. But now I'm talking about. You know, 2020 is set to be one of the three hottest years, despite an, a La Nina that we have. And I, here is the top 10 weather and climate events of a record-setting year that I'm going to focus in detail on in this uh, particular video and the ones to follow. Okay, so here's the article, the top 10 weather and climate events of a record-setting year. It's been an all-around bizarre and largely unpleasant calendar year. Extreme weather and climate related, but, you know, on top of the coronavirus. So here's an image here of one of the bizarre things that happened in 2020. So September 16th, we had record western U.S. wildfires. The smoke completely crossed the continent of North America, came into the North Atlantic. And here it's being, here's a Hurricane Paulette, one of the record 30 Atlantic named storms in 2020 low pressure area here so the rotation is this way so it's actually sucking in the wildfire smoke into the um, into the uh, hurricane so here on earth null school um, i went to that particular date and i'm so i'm doing you know if you click on earth and i selected the date now to remember to set the date here um, it was september 11th in the image i'll just show you how to do this so it says it's September 16, 2020. Um, so what I did is, you know, if you go click back, it's three, hour, three hours back, three hours forward, or here, a, a day for, or a day forward, a day back, three hours difference here. So I click back a day, and you can notice up in the URL the date, 2020, 09. So I changed the date here from the present day. I put 09 for September. 11 for September 11, hit enter, and I'm looking at the particulates, the wind, PM 2.5 in this particular case. So this is any particles in the air that are 2.5 micron or smaller is being shown. And what you can see is you can see the wildfires that are going on here, and you can see the beginning of, of Hurricane Paulette. So now I'll just cycle through. Um, so this is November 11th. I'm cycling through three hours at a time here, and you can see the see this storm moving up, this tropical storm moving up. Okay, and what you can see is I'm looking at the particulates, so you can see what's happening. The smoke is coming across North America into the Atlantic. The storm is a low pressure area. It's sucking in the uh, particulates here. I'll just continue on as, as it's moving up. Now here, the, the redness is increasing, and I can click on this area and say, look, it's got 123 micrograms per cubic meter of air, per volume of air, and that's the particulates that are, uh, so that's the weight of the particulates, and the particles are 2.5 micron or smaller. This is, would be 10 micron or smaller. So you can see there's a lot more 10 micron particles but we'll keep it here, and then you can uh, still scroll through. Look at the amplification and intensification. Now, if you go to the source of the fires, you know, there's some numbers over 1,000 um, micrograms per, 
per cubic meter. So these are where the fi these are where the particles are being generated. These hot spots in the North American fires, they're being the smoke's being carried across North America into the Atlantic and being caught up in the in the hurricane and and, and the levels are amplified and just tracking along on the hurricane. So then you can see it continuing on. And the picture was taken on September 16th. Okay, so let's, look, let's continue down in this article and let's look at the uh, top 10 events. So the first one is the hottest year on record. Okay, we could, um, the number won't come out until January 14th, but according to NASA, the Earth's average surface temperature in 2020 is likely to tie with 2016 for the hottest year on record making the last seven years the seven hottest years on record. But remarkably, the record warmth of 2020 is occurring during a minimum in, in, minimum in the solar cycle. So when there's so, sunspots, those are cool spots on the sun, cooler than the background temperature, but the edges of these uh, sunspots have very, very high intensity solar radiation. So when there's lots of sunspots on the sun, lots of cool spots, the edges or the, the net effect is the sun is producing more solar energy because of the edges of the cool spots. So, uh, so when there's minimum in the solar cycle, then there's you know the sun is putting out a bit less energy. Very, it's about 0.1% uh, the change from a cycle. It's an 11 year cycle, the, 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 the solar cycle. Okay, so we're having that. So the sun's putting out a bit less energy because we're at a minimum of the solar cycle. We have a moderate La Nina event um, this year, and this normally produces a slight global cool down. Um, so how are we setting a, an all-time heat record this year? The record heat in these circumstances is a demonstration of how powerful human causes of global warming have become. Basically, I think that the aerosols are, we have far fewer aerosols in the atmosphere, so there's less blockage of the sun, right? We have far fewer because of the coronavirus uh, shutdowns over the year. So more sun is getting in. It's this Faustian bargain of, you know, uh, global dimming is being reduced. Global dimming from the aerosols are being reduced. Okay, so, so here's, what, here's what typically happens. This is the El Nino, La Nina, um, global surface temperature influence. So El Nino, very, very warm Pacific. La Nina, very, very cool Pacific. El Nino, most of the record years that we set like in 2016, for example, are El Nino years. So they're generally warmer years because that's the red lines, the red dots, those years, and the, here's the fit. I mean, we're going from 1980 to 2020 here. Okay, so what you can see is the temperatures, we expect records to be set in El Nino years, but this year, you know, this is neutral years, is the black, the black uh, squares and the black fit. And then El Nino or La Nina years, the cooler years, are the bluer years, and you can so you can see the temperatures are generally lower for those years. So we're in an El Nino year to a neutral year, and yet we're setting a global temperature record or near record. So this is a huge problem, and again, I think it's related to the lack of aerosols. Okay, um, so here's what we have. Here's the uh, temperature prediction that was done. Um, it was done just a week and a half or so, about 10 days ago. This is the, just, uh, the, the Goddard Institute of Space uh, uh, Sciences temperature, and you can see the prediction was to set a new uh, record year. But um, since, th since this was done in the last few weeks, we've had a cooling a bit, so we may not set a record. It might be second or third. This is the solar cycle sunspot number. So lots of sunspots here. This is a hundred sunspot number, you know, this 150 here. Um, and right now we're in a, a, a low, a lull. So almost, you know, very, very few sunspots. There was a recent jump up to about about uh, 30 or so here. But in, so this is the beginning of 2020. This is the beginning of 2021. Here we are, you know, recently. So it jumped up a little bit, but generally low, spot, low number of sunspots. So it should be cooler. Um, also the ENSO index, the, Oce o the ONI, Oceanic Nino Index. Okay, this is 
This is uh, El Nino's here. This set a record year in 2016. Here's a here's a dip, so we're low. So we shouldn't be shouldn't have set a record this year. Thanks for listening. I'll continue in a series of videos.